Hello everybody, Gary Beck here, naturopath, and this is a session in our Wellness ABCs. This is a, a series that I've created where we go through the alphabet and look at different topics, different things, and I encourage you to join in and to share and to ask questions. Um, and uh, today our topic is A for Apple. So what is it about an apple? Why would I even want to talk about apples? Well, apples are part of a pretty success story, you know, the pretty big success story. We have apples grown all around the planet. Apples are used daily by many people and they offer some great nutrition. You know, a simple little apple, 150 grams is a sort of common size and it's packed full of nutrition. It's uh, rich in things like flavonoids, antioxidants and of course fiber. And these are things that we all need. These are all things that we get from the things that we ingest. So a little bit about the humble apple. It has a uh, flavonoid which is a particular favorite of mine and this is a thing called crescetin. So crescetin is an interesting uh, flavonoid that is um, has some really interesting anti-inflammatory properties. So crescetin, you'll find it in quite a range of foods but it is quite rich in apples and it has this wonderful anti inflammatory effect and it's used in a supplement form to, to alleviate allergies and a host of other things. So good old quercetin is one of the components in um, apples and another thing to understand is that uh, the flavonoids that are present in apples have been shown in more recent research to have quite an interesting beneficial effect on our neuro neurological system. So there are studies done regards neurology that uh, suggests that we can uh, even potentially lower the risk of things like Alzheimer's by making sure that apples and the components that are in apples are a regular part of a person's diet. Uh, there are other studies that will suggest that, um, in fact there's a study I came across which has over 9,000 people in it over a number of I think something like 20 plus years, 24 years, 9,200 people where they determined that the people that, owe, uh, that ate the most apples, in fact, had the lowest risk of thrombotic conditions such as strokes. So strokes, of course, are a big problem and affect a lot of people. And if we can reduce strokes, then wouldn't that be a good thing? So apples, more apples, less strokes. It's kind of a nice um, benefit of apples. Let's just look around. So the thing with an apple is that, unfortunately, it is... Because it's so widely grown, a lot of the, the food that's grown unfortunately is exposed to chemicals, pesticides and, and uh, herbicides and we of course don't want those. And if you search out this uh, group of foods known as the Dirty Dozen, unfortunately apples are in there. That means that apples that have been tested from the marketplace often have residues of chemicals, residues of sprays that are toxic that we don't really want in our food. So. Um, you know, washing the foods, yes, that is one step you can take, but of course, ideally, we'd be sourcing uh, fresh organic produce, so produce that is grown without these chemicals. So if you can source the apples from a organic grower, certainly do so. Um, that's going to just lift the benefits of this food significantly. Um, so yeah, it is part of the duty dozen. Now, and an important thing too is that the um, apples have a thing called uh, malic acid, another nice component. Now, malic acid is actually one of these things that also has an effect on, on uh, pain receptors and, and inflammation. And uh, sufferers of things like fibromyalgia have found benefits from uh, the combination of things like malic acid and magnesium. So another consideration, you know, good old apples supplying malic acid. The... Um, uh, you know, could a diabetic eat an apple? Yes, a diabetic could eat an apple. In fact, the whole apple, uh, skin and all, is going to have some benefits, and this is partly because of the nutrients that it's providing and also um, the fiber that's present in the whole food. Now, if we go a step further, um, in fact, the Diabetic Society in the US suggests, you know, having a couple of small apples a day is actually quite appropriate. And of course, we know that there's a lot of misinformation about food uh, when it comes to the diabetic picture. Metformin and 
Drugs to modify your blood sugar will not cure your diabetes. Food can. Uh, so that's just a little aside. Um, there's another interesting point where some more re recent research is telling us that the um, research into our whole gut microbiome uh, suggests that apples, and uh, here we're talking over seven varieties of apples have been tested, and they all enhance the good gut bacteria. So eating apples can enhance the good bacteria in your gut. And of course, we know that the, the good bacteria in our gut and our gut balance is really important in a whole host of both physical, mental, emotional aspects of our well-being. Um, oh, I said um. I'm trying to stop saying um. The, the, so apples, yes, apples, gut bacteria, and interestingly, the malic acid that I mentioned is, is associated with the more sour part of the apple. And um, what we've found is that the more sour apple, so a Granny Smith, for example, a nice crunchy green Granny Smith, is the one that's perhaps going to have the most benefit on improving the good gut bacteria. So good old Granny Smiths get a big tick and uh, win the prize for, for that. Uh, there is uh, also apples are used to make apple cider vinegar. Now I'm not going to talk about that because there's a whole host of hundreds of different benefits of apple cider vinegar, but you get the point. Apples, apples in all its different forms, particularly fresh, organic, is the way to go. So uh, just to wrap up, we've got a food that's highly nutritious, we've got a food that provides fiber, we've got a food that provides some interesting properties to help our gut and our uh, neurological system and uh, you can buy them every day from your local greengrocer or supermarket. The, um, and that wraps up today. Oh, just one other thing. Sorry, one other thing. Yes, you can eat the seeds. The seeds in apples have a um, component known as amygdalin, amygdalin or B17. Uh, if you look at some of the literature, it talks about this being converted to a form of cyanide. Yes, it, it, it does. And that has actually a positive effect on negative uh, pathogens or undesirable components that might be present in your body. So crunching on a couple of seeds is certainly not going to do any harm and may in fact do you some good by supplying a little shot of B17. So that's wrapping it up today. Uh, summarising, apples, go for organic if you can because they're part of the dirty dozen. Yes, they're, they're providing a whole host of beneficial nutrients and we generally need more good quality nutrients and it comes in different forms and sources. So I hope that's been helpful. This is Gary Beck signing off, and uh, this has been a day talking about A for Apple. Thanks for listening. Please join in and share and ask some questions. Bye for now.